Welcome back to Wasteland Engineering. In the previous episode, we went over the fundamental basics of building in Crossout. We talked about how to prevent part detachment and briefly touched upon protecting our weapons. In this episode, we will be taking a deeper look at how to armor our vehicle. We will be discussing which armor pieces to use, how to strategically use bumpers as armor, and how to find the right balance of armor. Given a space that we want to cover with armor, we want to use the largest possible piece that we have to cover that space. By doing so, we can reduce the amount of damage taken from splash damage weapons. Let's look at an example of how this works. We will be covering a 4x4x1 four by four by area with armor. In the first setup, we've placed two small platform parts next to each other. In the second setup, we've placed a single large platform part. If we compare the two setups, we can see that both have the same amount of HP and cover the same area. However, the first setup is more vulnerable to splash damage. When it is hit by a single shot from a splash damage weapon, we end up immediately losing both armor parts. However, in our second setup, our armor is able to withstand two shots from the same weapon, making it much tougher in comparison. By using large pieces, we can reduce the total number of parts affected by splash damage, which in turn reduces the amount of splash damage we take. This makes our armor more efficient and provides resistance against some of the most commonly used weapons in Crossout. At a glance, bumpers seem to be the best armor pieces in our inventory. They're decently sized, have an incredible amount of health for their size, and also resist melee damage. However, bumpers are not without several drawbacks. They're extremely heavy for their size and cost a lot of power score. In addition, they do not increase the durability of our cabin unlike normal armor pieces. Because of this, we want to use our bumpers sparingly, but strategically. We want to use bumpers to defend vital parts of our build, like weapons and generators. Due to their increased toughness, bumpers need to be especially protected against part attachment. As mentioned in the previous episode, we want to make sure that our bumpers are well connected to our vehicle to ensure that we're getting the most out of them as a piece of armor. By carefully placing bumpers on our vehicle, we can drastically increase the toughness of vital parts on our build. Armor has two hidden costs, weight and power score. Too much weight on our vehicle will slow us down, making us easier to hit. Too much power score will cause us to be matched against opponents with more firepower, making our increased armor less effective. We can't ignore armor completely either. Since armor contributes to our cabin health, foregoing armor means that we will be destroyed very quickly in a match. This means that our end goal is to find the right balance of armor. Finding the right balance will take some trial and error. We can begin by adding a single layer of armor around our vehicle. The armor pieces in this first layer should only be connected to our cabins, frames, and weapons, and not other armor pieces. This gives us a good starting point from which we can begin tweaking our armor. Once our first layer is in place, we can start modifying our armor. If our build needs to be light and fast, we want to use armor pieces and bumpers with low weight. Parts from the fire starters and nomads factions are ideal for such builds. 
If our build can afford to be slow, we can use heavier, more durable parts, preferably from the Scavengers and Steppenwolves factions. After we've applied our first layer of armor, we will need to take our build into battle for further adjustments. During each match, we want to see if we lose our cabin first or our weapons first. In the situation where we lose our cabin first, but our weapons still seem untouched, we might want to add more armor to the rest of our vehicle. On the flip side, if we lose our weapons first, but our cabin is still relatively intact, we want to add more armor around our weapons instead. Through this process, we can find the right balance of armor, improving both the efficiency and mobility of our vehicle. In this episode, we went over which armor pieces to use, how to use bumpers, and how much armor we should place on our vehicle. As we end this episode, we want to keep the following guiding questions in mind. When choosing between different armor pieces, am I choosing the largest possible single piece for the space I need to cover? Am I using bumpers to strategically protect my weapons and other vital points? Have I placed enough armor to protect my vehicle and its weapons without weighing it down too much? That's all for this episode of Wasteland Engineering. In the next episode, we will take a deeper look at pass-through parts, discuss how to position armor, and talk about other ways of making our vehicle more durable. Thank you for watching, and see you out there in the wasteland.